So we're just going to talk about uh, zeros, this idea of zeros and how they show up on graphs um, or don't show up on graphs. So last week we asked you to practice some stuff like this. Say that y equals that. Um, and it's cubic, right, third power. And it looks like it has these three zeros here, these three x-intercepts. So one's at negative one, one at two, and one at three. Um, if I had gone through all my synthetic division work, I would know that this is equivalent to, since this is a zero at negative one, this would factor out to, it would have a, a factor of x plus one times, this is a positive two, so a factor of x minus two. Remember we're saying like what value here makes this a zero. And then the third one is the positive three, so it would be x minus three. And you can see how those are the same. Same graph, they have the same zeros. So when we are in this form, we don't see those zeros regularly, but once we factor it, once we go through uh, using that synthetic division tool to get it into this form, we can see those zeros readily. And again, x minus three, it's a zero because if I plug three in to this, three minus three is zero, zero times anything is zero, so that's when it outputs a zero. Now, some, um, actually, this also has a y-intercept of 0, 6, this equation. So what's interesting to me about that is uh, I could have the same zeros. I'm going to turn that off for a sec. I could have the same zeros and maybe uh, multiply the whole thing by 2. So notice if I multiply this whole thing by 2, it stretches it by a factor 2 from that, from that x-axis. I have the same zeros because if I plug them into here, I get I get zero times two but what happens is uh my y-intercept changes because every other point changes because it gets stretched so here it's at zero twelve remember it was, it was at zero six before that multiplier so i could i could do that same thing here with this graph and show how it pops it up so the the intercepts are the x-intercepts and the zeros are fixed we can see what they are from the factored form but when I multiply it by some value, it stretches it out, but still has the same zeros, but it changes all the other points. Cool. So that's when you can see all three of them. Uh, what if I had something that looks like this? x cubed uh, minus 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. So if you look at that, wow, that's this weird, ugly, it's still cubic, but it only has that zero uh, there that shows up. Now, if I were to factor this, this actually factors into uh, x minus 2 times x squared plus 9. And we know how to deal with this. We could just solve it out or use quadratic formula or whatever. Uh, but what that means is I've got two other zeros here that aren't x-intercepts. They must be complex. So what would they be? Uh, well, we, we, you know, we know how to do that. We, we dealt with this last time. If I had like x squared uh, plus 9 equals 0, I could use quadratic formula or I could subtract 9 from both sides, square root it. That's a negative 9 because I added 9 from both sides, sorry. Square root that, plus or minus comes in with it. Uh, square root of 9 is 3, square root of negative 1 is i. So my other zeros are, are plus or minus 3i. So there we go. Uh, let me do one more that's kind of like this. So I'm going to have zeros at uh, 5, 7, and negative 3. So if I have one at 5, I know I'll have to have an x minus 5. Or if I had one at uh, 7, it would be an x minus 7. And if I had one at negative 3, it would be an x plus 3. And so notice there's my equation right there. If I wanted to write it in the x cubed plus blah, blah, blah form, I would multiply this out. And uh, I'm going to talk about that in, the, in another video. So let's take a look at um, what if I had something like x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 1. So notice that I have these, I actually have three 
actually have uh, these three factors, but one of them is repeated. So there's my there's my x minus one one, but my x plus two times x plus two, it only shows up once. So it's a repeated root. And uh, x plus two times x plus two, you know, if you multiply that out, that makes a quadratic. It makes a the shape is a parabola. And if you look just kind of locally around that, it looks like it makes kind of a parabola. So that's that's interesting. So if I have a zero that just comes up and brushes but doesn't come through, and it looks like a parabola, it's probably a repeated root. It happens twice. Um, notice the, the zero is at negative two. We say that that has a, a multiplicity of two. In other words, it happened twice. Um, and we can have something larger than uh, just a cubic. Like let's say I added uh, an x plus three into this, something like that. Uh, so notice it, it still has that repeated root here at the negative two, but now it has a zero here and a zero here as well, all three. So when I have a graph that looks like this, I know that this is the case. So I'm gonna do something sneaky for a sec. So the screen's gonna change really quick here in just, uh, just a minute. I'm gonna show a graph and I want us to think about what the equation for it could be. Oh, how'd that happen? All right, so take a look. All of a sudden I have this right here. So notice I have a zero uh, here at one and here at three, but I can tell that this is a repeated zero. So uh, what do you think it might be for this? I know that I have to have an x minus one in it. It has to have an x minus three in it. But since this it looks like it happens twice, that x minus three should be repeated. It should happen twice. All right, so again, that has a multiplicity of two. Um, that means like if I were to look at, looking at this and I wanted to factor it, if it was given to me in a, a polynomial form, you know, like x cubed, blah, 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 um, I could divide out that, that three twice um, doing synthetic division to get there. All right, I hope, uh, I hope this helped. Send us questions as you're working on these.